to Al Steinberg. Thank you all for uh, investing time this morning to come here. Uh, I am a business unit executive for Big Data for, for this area. Uh, I've been with IBM for about a year and a half now, and I think the, the same reason that you're here is the same reason I am here, right? The excitement around Big Data and IBM's position. Right? IBM has, has been in this business for at least 10 years, uh, either through organic growth or development or through acquisition. Um, there's five areas that big data encompass, and I'm going to really focus on the first, which is data warehousing, right? Structured data, so that's number one. I think we, we talked about that. There's the unstructured data component, which is the Hadoop offering, or what we call Big Insight. Right? There's real-time analytical processing, which is the streams component that, that uh, Stuart talked about, a lot in the telco space. The fourth is uh, enterprise search, right? Which is the Vivissimo component, and five is data models, right? So uh, being able to, to put together the right foundation. So I'm going to focus on the, on the first one, the data warehousing component, um, for the analytical processing, which is the legacy Natiza uh, portion of it. But let me talk a little about Natiza first as a company, kind of the foundation, and then I'll talk a little about kind of some of the, uh, what the problem is that we solve and some of the customers and how they're, how they're using it. So Natiza was founded very close to here, actually. Uh, the, the headquarters is a publicly traded company were in Marlboro, uh, right, right up the street. Um, it, it was founded in 2002, and if you think about the world in 2002, Right, the, the overall problem was that um, data warehousing was very difficult. And a lot of the, the, the reason was either input outputs, I.O., or, or just the, the way that the data warehouse market was, was built. And Tisa said, we want to get into this space, but we don't want to just be another player, because quite frankly, there's a lot of big players in the space, between Teradata and Oracle and even IBM, right? So what Natiza said is, we're going to reinvent the way that we look at data warehousing, and we're going to come up with an appliance, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. So it's a company that's really proud of itself, both from a product development side and also a corporate culture on being easy to do business with, that hopefully, for the customers who have been along for the ride, that you still continue to see, even, even as part of IBM. Um, and I'll get into a little bit more about it, but there's about 600 customers who are using uh, Natiza today. So I, I love this quote. It's Hal Varian. I don't know if, if folks know who, who he is. He's the Chief Economic Officer at Google. Uh, and this is probably one of my favorite quotes of kind of the, the time that we live in, and I think specifically on, on where we are now. So I think the 90s and the 2000s were all around integration of systems and kind of availability of data, right? And I think where we're moving to, and I think it's pretty obvious where, when the reason probably you guys are here is big data is more than just the consolidation of data or different sources of data, but it's how do you tap into that data, as Stuart talked about, to be able to make it dance, right, and to drive business value. And it's not just about viewing the data, but it's also about finding the insights out of it. And the people who are going to be able to tap into that are really going to be the rock stars of, of the next 10 years, right, plus. I, I think that, that's, that's pretty clear what we're seeing from customers who are starting to tap into it. And the second major trend that we're seeing is uh, the democratization of data, right? And I, so typically, when you had a few metrics that were available to put into standard reports, it was a lot easier to kind of control or create a single view of what that, that information looked like. I think as you uh, are, are proliferating the sources of those data, and the, the, the sources of data and the metrics that are available, and also when your business users are going home and using Google, right, and using all this other stuff that's available on the internet, there are expectations from you about the questions that they want to ask and the, the results of those questions are changing the paradigm of how data warehousing exists. I'll give you a great example. The whole idea of 20 questions, right, is, it, is he famous, is it he or she, right? Question begets question. You kind of search by getting to the end of the result. Traditionally, the way that, that the data warehouse system was set up, and, and I would say the, un, the capitalist or, or the communist system of, of, uh, of data, was somebody in IT basically is going to predict what the business user is, is going to ask for, and they're going to partition and index and, and do everything they need to do on disk management to be able to answer that specific question. It doesn't really support ad hoc analysis that well, because once you get off road, right, or off that gear, it kind of falls down and your performance is slow. So the whole idea of being able to give the users the untapped ability or unconstrained ability to ask any questions they want is really what we're seeing as a big movement. And I think you know, it's either within a company or also externally where people are starting to share that data with suppliers or vendors or whoever it is in a secured fashion to be able to let them do their own reporting. All right, so, so face our, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I think the reason you all are here is because you guys are, are living this. But I think there's a few things that are pretty fundamental across the world, right? So, uh, as we, we talked about before, the, the data that was created in the last two years uh, exceeds the data that was created in all history up until two years ago. Right? So data is exploding. A lot of this is unstructured data. We're kind of going to talk more about structured data here. But the data is growing. And um, 
the speed and kind of the dynamic mix kind of all play together, right? It's, it's getting more complicated to be able to, re to give the business users what they want to see. And, you know, I think this is, this is no, uh, no secret that the reason, the, 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 the approach that people are using to solve this problem is the same approach that they've been using for 15 years plus, right, in a lot of cases. And quite frankly, it doesn't really work anymore, right? And 70% of the data warehouses that we see out there are having some kind of performance issues. Either it's a latent issue that people still kind of are working around or at least uh, living, with, it, uh, living with, with the reality of it, or they're saying, you know what, it's time to change because you know, we're, it's, it's impacting our ability to deliver. So what Natiza has done is really think about how do we change this, right? How do we recognize that ad hoc is the way it is, simplicity is the way it is, people want to get out of the business of being a data warehouse experts and start getting into the uh, you know, management of information. Okay, so the first thing that, that happened is, is this appliance concept, right? This is kind of one of the, the um, probably the overarching uh, philosophies that Natiza brought to the market, right? So this is 2002, prior to the iPad and you know, all these other Apple instruments that I think are probably the best commercial example of a, an appliance. And if you think about what an appliance really is, it's a combination of hardware and software developed by the same manufacturer where you can purpose build between the two, right? So, Apple, when they, when they came out with the, the iPad, or the, I guess what was first, the, um, the iPod, right, was that they just built it one single unit and it just worked, right? And I didn't have to explain it to my grandmother, she just picked it up, or my two-year-old, and they just picked it up and they just started using it, right? Because it was, it was built for that specific purpose and it, and it just did it, did it very well. Natiza is the same thing, right? It's, it's the whole idea of being able to build a purpose-built application between hardware and software that does a specific purpose, in this case, uh, analytical processing. Um, all right, so the customers, customers that are using it, we have about 600 customers across the board, uh, across a bunch of different industries, and what I, I think some of you might, might actually be up here. Um, the, one that I, the, the one that I want to point out, the one row is the top of digital media. So a lot of these other uh, industries, like retail and financial services, data is kind of a, is a, is acceleration of what they're doing already, right? But the service they're providing is something other than data. They're using it to get better at whatever service they're providing, like retail. The top row is actually companies, and if you, you look across at companies like Nielsen and Epsilon, um, these are companies that their core business is based on data and the processing of that data, and a lot of them choose Matiza to support that. Okay. Um, Nielsen is, is a, a marketing analytics company. Um, one of the core tenements uh, around Natiza's speed, right, performance, and I, I think you can, you can see this, uh, their, their quote kind of says it all. And let, me, let me paint an example. I'm, I'm sure in every one of your organizations you have some um, queries or, or complex analytics that takes 24 hours to run, right? So what that means is some SaaS developer, SPSS developer is coming in on Monday, they're doing some work, and they're pressing go on Monday at 12 o'clock. Then they go home, right, they have lunch, they go home, they come back the next day, 12 o'clock on Tuesday, they get the results of that analysis, right, and then they say, hey, I didn't really mean to put that variable, I'm gonna press it again, 12.30. Now they come back on Wednesday, do the same thing Thursday, Friday. So in a week they ran it four times. If that 24 hour query can now be done in 10 seconds, think about that same process. It's 12 o'clock on Monday, I just press go. It's now 12.01, I change the variable, I press go. I could do that same thing when I did in a week, and now literally in 30 minutes, and I'm much more engaged because I don't have to walk away and get distracted, right? It's really changing the context of how people are doing their business. Uh, eHarmony is it's the uh, data site matches kind of uh, variables from different people. Uh, this one is all about the simplicity, and you know I think a lot of people, hopefully when we talk about the capabilities, and, and Jeff is going to talk a little about existing capabilities and also some of the things that are coming uh, in, in the future, is that. It almost seems too, too good to be true, right? This whole idea is like, tr truly, if you're telling me I, I get it, then it just does what it says. So since it's a self-contained appliance, what we see is it is actually, actually the case, right? It's, it's a great quote here where we ship the box. Within 24 hours, it was installed and there's some low data. Within another 24 hours, they were starting to query against it. And that's very common, I think. All right. um, scalability, uh, Stu, we're talking about New York Stock Exchange. Um, what, what we find here is that uh, it's sources of data, the, the quantity of data is, is not an issue. Uh, instead of talking about New York Stock Exchange, I'm going to talk about another customer um, down in Tampa called Catalina Marketing. Uh, people familiar with Catalina? All right. Um, I'm sure everybody here interacts with Catalina at least once a week or once every two weeks. In some way, you probably don't even know about it. So I'll, I'll paint the picture for you, and next time you're there, you, you'll, 
you'll get a, I guess, a giggle, or you'll think back to, to this moment. So when you go to the supermarket, and you, uh, you have your, your, uh, your items that you're checking out, you scan the items, and then there's a two second pause after it's, it's scanned where you get your coupons, right, that are, that are printed out. So if you look closely on that machine on the side, it says Catalina Marketing or Catalina Machine. And they're in the business, uh, they have about 80% of the US uh, grocer data that they contain within a, a data warehouse, about 35 wraps of, uh, of Natiza down in Clearwater, Florida. What they're doing is they're, if you identify yourself by a loyalty card, they're looking at your last three baskets that you, that you looked at to say people who buy these three things, the propensity is diapers you buy every fourth visit or beer you buy, whatever the correlations of their SAS models predict. And they're in the business of coupon redemption. So prior to using the TISA, and they're also a big SAS user, their coupon redemption was somewhere in the six to eight percent. After they used Natiza to be able to increase the number of SaaS models they used to predict what those coupon redemptions are, or what based on the market baskets they should be, it went up to into the 20s, right? And they're able to run uh, hundreds of SaaS queries instead of the like, several dozen they were before. So next time you look, you're there and you swipe it out, you look at the card, it says, it will look at your shopping behavior and it'll basically predict to you what the coupon is to, to increase the performance, right? That coupon. So great, great customer, great example. Right. All right, so with that, I'm going to hand it over to Jeff. If there's any questions, uh, we'll do some Q&A towards the end. Thank you so much.